Confused about how to draw deflected shapes, bending moment diagrams, and shear force diagrams for tricky frames? In this lesson, I will show you quick and proven tips to solve even the most complex structural frames fast and accurately. So grab your pen and let's get started. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at University of East London. On this channel, we explore structural engineering. Most students and engineers, they find it difficult to draw a diagram for these two frames. And I will tell you quick tips on how to draw diagrams for these two frames. After I discuss these tricks with you, then you'll be able to do it really very quickly. So let's dive into solving these two problems. The difference between these two problems is that in first one, we have load applied at the overhang portion and this member is inclined and here the member is vertical and you will see that how drastically this affects the overall behavior of the frame and it will affect the direction of sway as well. Let's first deal with the first example. So we have to draw the deflected shape for this frame. And additionally, I will be drawing the bending moment and shear force diagram as well. And I will be finding out direction of reactions as well. And that will complete the entire loop for this structure. Once we have this information, then we can successfully design this structure. Let us assess first option. When we apply load at the end, uh, first of all, the frame is going to sway towards the weaker side. Firstly, when we apply load at the tip, then in my view, this is going to turn the entire beam into tension at top. And here we have double curvature in beam. And I don't understand this logic of beam having double curvature. For this reason, I will say this option is incorrect. And also when we have tension at the top in the beam, this is going to sway the beam towards left rather than right here sway is happening towards right. I'm sure that this option is incorrect. Now let us assess second option when we apply loading at the end. This will turn the entire beam to bend in single curvature and tension is at top. The only thing I'm worried about is this bending in column. The column is bending inwards which may not be possible because when you're applying tension in the beam then the bending should be outwards. Another point is that theta is zero over here, which is not possible. Theta is zero or rotation is zero when we have a fixed support. So here we don't have a fixed support. We have a pin support. The pin support will show some kind of rotation. Here this rotation is not shown. So that's why I will say that this option is incorrect as well. Now let us assess option C. In option C, when we apply loading, this is deflecting downwards. Again, I don't see the reason why the beam is deflecting downwards over here. There's no other vertical load applied. And I don't see the beam not swaying. Here, the beam is not swaying at all towards left or right. Sway would happen in this case because we have overhang portion over here. We have a cantilevered structure. So for this reason, option C is incorrect as well. Now this leaves me only one option. So by process of elimination, I would say option D is correct. But let us assess the option as well to see for sure that if it is right or wrong. So when we apply downward force, it will really push the beam upward. So we will have tension at top and it will move towards weaker side and weaker side will be leftwards. Also, the beam is bending, but it has got tension outside. So option D is the correct option. For solving the question, I will be applying these three golden rules. The first rule is rigid joints 
will remain at 90 degree. For example, there is a rigid joint over here. When you are applying load at the tip, the 90 degree angle, which is here, it does not change at all. It will remain 90 if the joint is rigid. The second rule is that fixed support will have zero rotation. This is a fixed support. Theta over here is going to be zero. So slope or rotation at a fixed support will always be zero. Thirdly, internal pin does not take any moment at all. So here we have internal pin. Moment is always going to be zero at internal pin. So these are the sign conventions which I will be using. Anti-clockwise shear forces are positive. Tension, it means that arrows pointing away from the element will be positive. And clockwise moments from left are positive. From right, anti-clockwise moments are positive. And for bending moment diagram, sagging moments are drawn inside the frame and hogging moments or negative moments or anti-clockwise moments are drawn outside the frame. Reverse is the case for shear force diagram. When we will draw the negative forces inside and positive forces outside. Remember that anti-clockwise shear forces are positive. Anti-clockwise shear force is like this. It will generate anti-clockwise moment and it has to be drawn outside the frame. This is how deflected shape is drawn. Important thing to note here is that we have tension at top here, tension in this direction and here we have tension outside. So this will help us determine the bending moment diagram. Other very important thing is that when the beam is being pushed towards left that means the horizontal reaction that will prevent it from being pushed towards left will be rightward so we will have rightward direction for horizontal reaction and horizontal reaction at right support will be leftwards because it has to be opposite the important thing to note here is that the entire force is taken by this right reaction and there will not be any vertical reaction at left support. Because of the inclined member, the entire force is transferred to the right support and right support will have a vertical reaction. This is the reason that we will not have any shear transfer between this portion of the beam. Now, once we have direction of reactions and once we have deflected shape then we can draw the bending moment diagram so the first thing is we have tension at top so from here we will have tension and this will generate tension inwards as well in in the beam and from this point to this point tension remains constant but it has to be smaller and for left column the tension is outside so i will draw its diagram like this so we have negative negative is drawn outside positive is drawn inside remember for bending moment diagram positive is inside negative moments are outside now once we have drawn the bending moment diagram, then we are in a position to draw the shear force diagram. For drawing shear force diagram, first thing you have to remember is that negative shear force is drawn inside and positive shear force is drawn outside. The direction of reactions is that we have rightward direction, we have leftward direction, we have upward direction. Starting from left, we have rightward direction and because we are applying loading over here this is going to bring the frame towards left at the top and this is creating anti-clockwise shear force so anti-clockwise is drawn outside the frame 
So anti-clockwise forces are positive and there is no vertical reaction at left support. And for right overhang portion, it is creating a clockwise shear force. So clockwise shear force is drawn inside the frame. So I will draw it over here. Clockwise is negative. Because this horizontal force over here, it is going to generate clockwise shear force. So clockwise shear forces are drawn negative. So that's why we will have negative shear force over here. So the correct option is option D. In this question, we have to draw the deflected shape. And additionally, I will draw bending moment and shear force diagram as well. And let us see what difference do we have as compared to the previous one. I've taken this example from the Institution of Structural Engineers Certificate in Structural Behavior practice questions. And I found some of the options are incorrect. And I'll explain in a minute why this option is incorrect. Option C especially. But first, let me assess the option A in the light of uh, golden rules that I mentioned earlier, which are that fixed support will have zero rotation, internal pin will have no moment, and rigid joint will maintain 90 degree angle. Here, when we apply loading at the end, see that double curvature is happening here. The double curvature will happen, but the amount is quite a lot. And here, the column is not bending at all. In my view, column will bend. So when the column is not bending, when you're applying load, it means that this option is wrong. And secondly, for the same reason, the columns are not bending in option B. So option B is wrong as well. Thirdly, option D is incorrect as well. The reason is that this column is being shortened. So it cannot shorten when you apply loading and also it cannot move towards left side because it will move towards the weaker side and weaker side is in this direction so that's the reason this option is wrong as well this only leaves me with option c it should be correct but here in this option the column is going through axial shortening over here which should not happen which in my view is incorrect because axial shortening should not happen in the column because it is allowed to move up and when you apply loading over here the load is not entirely vertical to this column so i think that axial shortening should not happen another important thing here to note is that here theta is zero rotation is zero so rotation cannot be zero when you have a pin support it will always rotate it can only happen when you have a fixed support in a fixed support rotation angle will be zero so here it will have some value it can be like this but it will have some value so for these two reasons, I think that this option is wrong as well. But because process of elimination has led me to this option, so I will correct this option. This is a mistake in their practice questions. And I will draw it again. So the correct option is option C. And it should be drawn like this. When you apply loading over here, the top is going through tension. And here we have tension inside and here outside and you can see that clearly we have theta angle happening and because of fixity we have tension inside over here for joint compatibility the tension has to be inside in this portion and there will be point of contraflexion somewhere here the beam is going through double curvature so option c is the correct option let us now draw its shear force and bending moment diagram and have its reactions. First, the deflected shape. When we have deflected shape, we will first of all determine the tension direction. So tension is here, tension is here, and tension is here. So when tension is at the top, the beam is being moved towards right. It means that the direction of reaction here should be downwards 
and here it should be upwards and the reaction horizontal reaction has to be leftwards and here direction of reaction has to be in this direction once i've got this direction then it's easy for me to plot the bending moment diagram firstly because i have tension at the top this will generate quite heavy tension here and in the column i have tension inside so it will have remember positive is drawn inside and negative is drawn outside and the beam has double curvature and because we have tension inside in the column we will draw the bending moment diagram like this once you have got bending moment diagram sorted then you can draw the shear force diagram and here i will have direction of reactions once i've got direction of reactions this leftward arrow will create clockwise shear force and remember that our sign convention is anti-clockwise shear force positive and clockwise shear forces are negative and in case of shear force diagrams negative is drawn inside the frame and positive is drawn outside the frame so here we have clockwise so clockwise has to be negative i will draw it like this negative again we have these two forces vertical forces vertical forces are creating anti-clockwise moment anti-clockwise shear forces not moment and anti-clockwise is positive so it will be drawn towards and this force and this reaction they are creating a clockwise shear force so clockwise is drawn on the negative side so that's why we have negative over here and finally this shear force will cause anti-clockwise shear force so anti-clockwise is drawn on the positive side So this is how we draw the diffraction shape, reactions, bending moment, and shear force diagram. You can now watch the entire video series on iStruct certificate in structural behavior by scanning this barcode or going to this URL. It's very useful playlist to watch. And if you want to clarify your basic concepts, watch this series now. You can download the lecture slides by scanning this barcode or going to this URL. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you think it added value to your knowledge and understanding.